Hey, Steve Mignani here from the Junkyard Crawl. You guys probably all know that for the last 18 years, I also do the Barrett Jackson collector car auctions in Scottsdale, Las Vegas, Palm Beach, Florida, and Reno. Well, for the next few days, I'm gonna be at the Las Vegas auction, and I won't be able to be in the junkyard to make fresh videos. So instead, what I'm gonna give you is for six days in a row, 15-minute uh, segments of the 90-minute video, How to Build Altered Wheelbase Funny Cars. Now, this is a DVD I used to sell for $19.95. I made it back in 2007, but it still holds water today. You can actually watch a 63 Dodge Dart turn into a funny car. There's also race footage from the Wilshire Shaker. Uh, there's also a Ford Fairmont altered wheelbase car. So again, for six days, we'll have 15 minutes episodes of how to build an altered wheelbase funny cars running from front to back. And when I get back from Barrett Jackson, we'll get right back to the junkyard. But in the meantime, enjoy how to build altered wheelbase cars starting right now. There's some uh, metal structures that link the uh, C-pillar to the wheelhouse. Those got to get out of the way too. Okay, we're at another critical point of mating this back portion together with the car. It's where we tie the rear portion of the car into the new rockers. And we have to take a little bit of time on this, making sure that our cuts are close enough that it will all tie together. If it's too wide, we're going to have to do a lot of welding and filling. So this is a crucial step. Take your time. Measure twice. Cut once. And what I'm going to do is go through these where these ribs are, which are part of the old floor pan, and I'm flatten them out so that when we weld them together, flat to flat, it's always easier to weld than trying to fill in these divots. So we'll just flatten them out along the edge. That way, when we bring the back part in, they'll marry real nicely together. They'll be easy to weld. Before we can do anything more inside the car, we have to come to the trunk and separate the perimeter of the trunk floor from the body. If you think this is too hard to do, you're crazy. Check this out. You can actually roll the chassis. 
back and forth inside of the body. Like I say, you can make this job easy or you can make it hard. It's easiest when you leave the whole thing in one piece and just shove it forward. Here we go. The outer skin of this car is the most important thing from an aesthetic standpoint. However, we have to restore the structural integrity because this car is eventually going to get a 500 horsepower max wedge motor. We don't want it to fold up when we hit the gas. Now at the back of the car, we've created a one foot gap when we move the floor pan forward. So we're going to have to span the gap and fill in the frame rails. Now this is a piece of one and a half by three square tubing and some would say just slip it into the stock rails and hope for the best. But as we can see, it swims around and flops around in there. This is no place to be doing booger welding where you fill the gaps with raw weld because it's not strong. So instead what we're going to do is we've made some steel plates. We're going to cap the frame rail ends like this and then weld in these new spans to restore the strength of the back. Fabricating the trunk floor filler is next. Now, the welding shifts from inside the trunk to outside the car on the body. to start joining the passenger side quarter panel back to the body of the car. On the driver's side we were spoiled because that was all metal. Well here on the passenger side there's some primer that's hiding something that's not so great. Dale, what are we looking at? Well, there's quite a bit of Bondo in there but you know you can't weld through Bondo. You got to grind it out there. So uh, we got to grind it down. We're not going to get too carried away but we're going to grind both sides, put it back together. Nothing a uh, a little bit more Bondo won't cover when it's all said and done. How thick is this stuff you see in here? Well, in this case, we've plumbed almost a quarter of an inch. Quarter an inch. That's okay. pretty thick for Bondo. Well, let's grind it out. Yep, take care of it. Okay. There you go. Okay, keep on going. There you go. One super important detail is to make absolutely sure that the body lines on the outside of the car are perfectly aligned before you start welding the patch back to the car. Why? Well, if you don't, other things will be out of alignment. To achieve alignment, not a big deal. I'm using a pry bar inside of the car. You can see 
you can actually move the body line in and out of register. So we'll get this thing lined up and Dale can tack it back together. We can work from the outside of the car in, rejoining it. Is that good, Dale? It's good. You like it? Yep. Yeah. With a couple of spot welds at the front of the quarter panel, we now go to the back. We've got a floor jack here supporting the frame under the trunk, and we're going to close up that body gap, and Dale can start welding it back together again. Well, we're just about halfway through the process of converting our little Dodge Dart into an altered wheelbase match racer. We've moved the rear suspension one foot forward, reducing the overall wheelbase from 111 to 99 inches. The body work, we're not going to do. We're just going to farm that out. But at the front of the car, there's still another half of the job to do. Gail, what is it? Well, Steve, we got to uh, remove the stock torsion bar suspension, take that Dodge A100 straight axle we have. We're going to need to narrow it down to fit the stock width of the Dart. And then we're going to install it. Let's get that thing in there. Let's do it. Before we get started on the front suspension of this car, I want to point out a couple of changes. First off, I put some white primer on the bare steel and the bodywork to keep it from flash rusting, but it also kind of gives the car a smoother look. The bodywork isn't done, but it looks very cool. And speaking of cool, the original 13-inch small bolt wheels have been replaced by a set of 15-inch torque thrusts. Now these have a big bolt pattern, so what I did is I re-drilled the stock seven and a quarter rear axle to accept the five on four and a half bolt pattern so these beautiful wheels can be installed on the car. Eventually, an eight and three quarter Chrysler rear axle will be used in this car, but for the time being, he gets it up off the ground, and it now is a rollable car. It looks pretty cool. Now, at the front of the car, we will be altering the wheelbase and installing a straight axle. Now, you may wonder, why a straight axle? Well, the thing with a straight axle is that basically the two front tires are fixed together by that axle so that there's no change in caster, camber, or tow as the front of the car accelerates off the starting line. In a drag race application, many cars with independent front suspensions, as the front end unloads, they go through really radical camber, caster, and tow changes that can make handling quite a bear. So in a straight line, a straight axle is actually a better bet for a violent type funny car. Beyond that, we're going to be increasing our car's center of gravity by lifting the front of the car. Now, as we all know, most independent style front suspensions only go about one or two inches of height increase before you get into some unfixable camber and caster problems. Not so with a straight axle. With a straight axle, the sky literally is the limit. This is the stock independent torsion bar front suspension from the dark. From drum to drum, it weighs 138 pounds, and it is a model of simplicity, but it has no place on a funny car. We want a straight axle. Now, if your wallet is thick, you can go ahead and get a custom-ordered tubular front axle like this one right here. Tom Medlock at Specialty Cars can sell you one of these for about $1,300. It's heavy-duty wall, two-inch main tubing with an internal stiffening beam that makes this rugged for street strip use in even a 3,000, 3,500-pound car. The only downside is this stuff ain't cheap. Beyond the purchase price of the axle, you've got to buy Willwood disc brakes, just about 600 bucks, a remanufactured or new Vega-type steering box. These can be as much as $400. Even things like this Borgeson joint, $69. So this stuff here can add up to almost $3,000. Or you can go to the junkyard. This is a Dodge A100 van straight axle. 
Now these are not light, 223 pounds versus about 156 for the tubular steel axle, but this is a classic piece of funny car history. In fact, the Little Red Wagon, Landy's 64 Dodge, the Mr. Norm 65 supercharged 165 mile an hour match racer, they all used this very same axle, as did the Kid Go and Rampage Dodge Dart. So there's a historical precedent for this axle. The first thing to do before anything is to establish where the original front spindle center line is. That was done earlier when the front of this car was still fully assembled. What you do is you just basically take a plumb bob, once again our L88 Chevy alternator pulley, and tape it down so that it is in perfect alignment with the center spindle of the front wheel. Then you mark the hood and that becomes your essential guide to where the original front axle center line was. Now we have to ask ourselves, how much do we want to move this axle? Well, I've seen a lot of old magazine articles, including one about the Kid Goat, in the 1965 issue of Customs Illustrated. They talk about four inch wheelbase alterations. Beyond that, we also look at vintage photographs to get some more ideas.